Good morning. Early Sunday morning. Christmas Eve. I know some of y'all are still in the bed or getting ready for church or on your on your way to church this Sunday morning. I'm out getting my walk in. For this morning, I'm wanting to come and have a chat with you guys. I know we're all enjoying our family, our friends. I got guests in this this weekend, having fun. But of course, y'all know I had to stay on my on my grind I had to get up and get up and walk this morning so i appreciate it. appreciate you guys who are going to watch the replay i wanted to come on and talk to you guys about uh do not abandon your faith and I, and this it's in regards to uh what's going on with Bishop Jakes and all that stuff. And uh, I wanted to come on and share some things with you. And, and, and why this was prompt, that, you know, why this live was prompt by the Holy Spirit. But I wanted to say to you all that maybe a few months ago, um, yeah, I'm going to say about a few months ago, I had a dream uh, about um, T.D. Jakes. So I knew something was getting ready to go down. I just didn't know what it was, and I knew it was bad, but I didn't know whether or not he was going to survive it. Um, so in the dream, he... It's like Sarah was uh, center stage, and she was his daughter, Sarah, was center stage. And then all of a sudden, she was moved out the way, and um, he became center stage. And I could tell in the dream that Bishop Jakes was so wounded, that he was so hurt. Um, he was, I, I could just tell, I, I, I could tell I didn't know whether or not he would survive whatever this was, but I could just tell in the dream that he was he was he was wounded. And now I, uh, now I understand the dream much better because now he is center stage, right? Sarah's no longer center stage. He is, and all the stuff and all the allegations that are going on. So when I woke up from that dream, I called my sister and another uh, pastor friend. And I told them both to begin to pray for Bishop Jakes and the family. I said, because something is getting ready to go down. Something is getting ready to happen. And like I said earlier, I don't know whether or not he would be able to survive it. So, of course, fast forward into now, all this stuff is coming out. But I want to say to you all, this morning I heard the Lord say to me before waking up, abandon not the faith. And I want to say to you all, abandon not the faith. I don't care what's going on with Bishop Jakes or anybody else. You don't let somebody else's situation put you at odds with your faith. So whenever y'all get a chance, make sure you read first Timothy and four. That's where that scripture is. Y'all know there's a U-Haul truck right here. I don't trust it. I don't know what's going on. Be alert. All right. I don't know where that's sitting there. But I got to pay attention. Preach and pay attention. 
Watch. I say watch. But anyway, y'all, I'm walking around the entire mall. I did it yesterday. And baby, my legs hurt. My butt hurt. What you say? But I gotta do it. So anyway, y'all, let me get back. Let me get back to what the Lord was saying. So the Lord said, first Timothy and four. Abandon not the faith. And if you read first Timothy and four, so when I heard that this morning before waking up, just before I woke up, I heard abandon not the faith. I said, okay, Lord. And I knew it had to do with this TD Jake situation. You all, if you missed the beginning, I told you about the dream about Bishop Jakes I had two or three months ago. I called my sister and another pastor friend to tell him, hey, pray for his family. Something's getting ready to go down. I'm not sure if he's going to survive it. So now I'm talking about what the Lord has given me concerning it. Abandon not the faith. Let me tell y'all something. All of us are capable of jumping traps. All of us, all of us are capable of jumping tracks. So be careful in how you handle this situation because all of us, all of us are capable of jumping tracks. That's why the Bible says abandon, not the faith. In other words, don't, don't, don't jump, don't jump track. Okay. You on the right track. Don't jump tracks. Okay. And so what the Lord was saying to me, and so I went to, of course, this morning when I heard that, I went to First Timothy, the fourth chapter. Y'all, I'm just looking around because people walk out. I don't know if people are crazy. You know, listen, I got to pay attention to now. Uh, I'm saved, but I will throw a punch. You try to rob me or something. Listen, man, I'm going down fight. All right? Pray for you. Pray for me. But anyway, um, First, the, the first uh, one Timothy and four, first Timothy and four, y'all. So what it's talked about, what Paul was saying to Timothy, now listen, there was a warning about false teachers in the last days. And let me tell y'all nothing before I get into first Timothy four. First of all, let me explain something to you. Ain't nothing just all of a sudden just exposed. Okay. Miss me with that foolishness. All right. Let me explain something to y'all. Ain't nothing just happens all of a sudden, like you just, everything, you just something exposed. No. God, he's a good parent. He's a good father. He always warns us and tries to get our attention before, before he removes his hand and allow the enemy just to destroy us and bring shame to us. Right? He's a good dad. He's a good father. He just doesn't have us out here not warning us before time. But then all of a sudden, boom, somebody's exposed. No, God been tapping on their shoulders. God has been trying to woo them and say, hey, I need you. I need you to change your heart posture. I need you to change some things. All right. So let me say that before. I get into first Timothy four. Ain't, ain't no just all of a sudden you just exposed. No. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. That's not how that works. No, no. You just have been ignoring the Lord. You have been ignoring the warnings. You have refused to hear the Holy Spirit. That's what has happened. Okay? All right. Now let's not let, let, let's not act like, ooh, all of a sudden I'm just I'm exposed. My business out now. God been trying to get your attention. God been saying to you, hey, this is wrong. Stop doing it. You do whatever you want to do, right? So when you expose, now you're acting like you just confused. But that's not how this works. So anyway, 1 Timothy 4. Let me go back to that. What Paul was telling Timothy, listen. Do not abandon your faith. What is the faith? The faith is sound doctrine right? And the gospel of Jesus Christ. What he was telling him in the last days, there are going to be false prophets, 
false teaching. So you're gonna be have you're gonna have deceiving spirits and and and, and doctrines of demons. That's that that's what Paul was saying to Timothy. But not only did Paul tell Timothy that in, in, in 1 Timothy and 4, he was also telling him what he needed to do so he wouldn't jump track, so he wouldn't find himself deceived. Okay? All right? This is relating to what's going on with Bishop Jace. If you hadn't watched in the beginning, in the beginning I told you the dream that I had that the Lord gave me two or three months ago, so I knew this was coming. So... Paul said to Timothy, give yourself entirely to godliness. Oh, Lord, I'm going to say that again. I'm going to say it one more time. Who give, your, give yourself entirely to godliness. That's what he told. That's what Paul told Timothy. The reason why Paul told Timothy that, because during that time, there's going to, he said, in the last days, there's going to be false teachers, false prophets, and they're coming to deceive you. And they're going to be doctrine of demons that's going to try to teach you stuff that's not sound doctrine. And let me tell y'all something. Y'all, we better be careful. We, we, we better be careful. And the stuff that we listen to, we, we, we better be careful. So he told, he told, Paul told Timothy, all right, now expect these things to happen in the last days. And you need to, how you guard yourself is giving yourself over to word, exhortation, and doctrine. That, that's what he said. That's what he told, that's what he told Timothy. All right. So you won't be deceived. That's why he said, give yourself entirely to godliness. And godliness, just not just with the word, but the way you live, your conduct. And that's what he also told Timothy. Don't don't despise your youth. What he was saying to Timothy in that verse was, listen, don't allow the older people to have something to say about your character. Live. Don't live, don't live in hypocrisy, live a godly life, live a, in conduct and the way that you do things, live accordingly. So the older saints, so the older folks won't, won't despise your youth. So you won't, you won't get caught up. They won't, they, they, they won't despise your youth. You, you young, but you saying this, but your whole lifestyle is different. All right. He said, don't give them anything to blame you, to, cut, to cause blame on your country. Live, live, live a godly lifestyle. And so let me say something to y'all. I don't care who it is. The idol worship that we have in America is off the chain. Y'all idolize white power. You idolize black power. You idolize African power. Every, you know, my traditions, my traditions. And let me tell, let me tell y'all something. You better be careful. You, you better think. You, you better act like you know God. You, you, you better, you better get an understanding of the doctrine. Because let me tell you one thing. Paul even talked about all these fables and stuff that's going to come in. During the last day, listen, let me tell y'all something. I don't care what your grandmama, granddaddy did or whatever. If it does not line up with the sound doctrine of Jesus Christ, I'm going to suggest what you do is put that aside. I'm going to suggest, y'all, I'm going up the hill. I'm going to suggest you think and make sure that whatever your traditions are, it lines up with the sound doctrine of Jesus Christ. Because don't let your traditions cancel out the gospel of Jesus Christ. But this is what we do. This is what we do. This is what we do. I, we, we, 
Nobody cares. Nobody cares. If you ain't walking in sound doctrine. Do y'all hear me? Sound doctrine. I'm not talking about all this other stuff we like to get involved in. Y'all like to Y'all, let me put on my glove. My hand's getting a little chilly. Sound doctrine. Y'all, give me a second. Hands getting cold. Ooh, Jesus. Okay. So, we get caught up, and and now we don't teach the Bible scriptures based on what they're talking about. We teach them so we can justify why we do what we do. Why we just, we can, we use the scripture to justify our ideas. Yeah, nothing to do with doctrine. I've said this over and over. The Bible is not about us. The Bible is about what Jesus did for us. I'm gonna say that one more time because the things get confused. The Bible is about Jesus Christ and what he did for us. It's not about us. Okay? All right? You ain't died on no cross. You No. Y'all, I like y'all got more compassion for the people than Christ. He the one who died. God created us. You got more compassion for me than my parent. Y'all think. We, we, we are such sympathizers with sin. We think sin is all right. When it's our favorite preacher, we can't believe it. Why? Why, why can't you believe it? They're flawed. They're in their flesh, just like anybody else. Just like you can jump, a tr jump tracks, they can jump tracks. Are you kidding me? All of us need Jesus. All of us. None of us are exempt. And, and it's easy for any of us to get out, to get off a of sound doctrine. And I'm just saying to y'all that don't abandon the faith. I, I, mm -mm. I don't, don't, don't do that. Don't get off into something. Right? That's not sound doctrine. Don't get off into all this other stuff. If y'all go read First Timothy 4, y'all see they, they start talking about you don't marry and don't eat certain things. And then and God had to tell, I think, tell Peter, listen, don't call what I call, don't call what I call clean, unclean. I mean, they just come up, coming up with all kind of legalism, doctrine of demons and deceiving spirits. The, as and if, if you do all of these things, as and if, let me tell y'all something. As and if, if we, as if we're not having sex before marriage, which is just the, which is your reasonable service if you're single. I mean, I'm trying to figure out why somebody owe you something. That, that's what confused me. What, 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 what do we owe you? We, we don't owe you nothing. Well, you, you think you deserve a pat on a pat on the back for your reasonable service or what you gonna let your dishes in your house stay dirty and don't clean them it's your reasonable service to clean the dishes in your house that, that that's your house so, i mean that ain't nothing new what you gonna do let your house stay dirty cleaning up your house is your reasonable service it's your house what y'all think god owe us something y'all think god owe us some blessings because we are doing our reasonable service and that is living in godliness. He's a good father. He's going to reward us because he's a good dad, not because we are performing. What, what, is, what, what, what is going on? No. We, he blesses us because he's a good parent. And he watches our heart. So this thing... We be acting like, if we do this, if we do this, if we do this, if we do that, somehow we have become more spiritual and somehow God is going to, 
you know, as in if, as in if God now is indebted to us <laughs> to bless us because we doing our reasonable service. If y'all, if the saints don't go get their mind all the way right, if you, if you, if we don't start thinking, if if we don't start acting like Jesus is Lord. Y'all, all of these demon adoptions, all of these deceiving spirits, it started with Eve and, 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 and the garden. Her and Adam, Adam, he's sitting, he right there by Eve, and they sitting there having a whole conversation with the enemy about something God had already given them directives about. He was right there. Adam was right there. And then when God confronted him about it, it, it was the woman you gave me. We still blame it to this day. I, you know, it wasn't me. It, it was, it was, it was a man you gave me. It was, it was her. Come on, y'all. These doctrines of demons and deceiving spirits, you, we better, we better think. We, we listen. Let me tell you one thing. Who uh, Solomon? He told Solomon, "Listen, don't go over there and marry these Canaanite women." Why? Let me tell you why he told him that. He told them that because he said, if, if you do, they're going to turn your heart away from me. That's what, that's what, that's what he told us. You, 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 they're going to turn your heart away from me. They, they, they are certain kind of people, right? They, they're going to turn your heart away from me. Y'all, y'all hear me? Y'all, listen, stop marrying Stop making covenant. I'm not talking about just no individual. In that particular context, it was actually talking about marrying women from Canaanite. But I want to talk about covenant. Stop make listen, stop marrying and making covenant with jobs and stuff that's gonna turn your heart away from the Lord. Stop marrying, coming in communion and networking with people that's gonna turn your heart away from God because that's exactly what I feel that has happened to Bishop Jakes. Y'all better think. Y'all better y'all better think. You 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 better you better you you better think. You better think. Cause see what happens is it's subtle. You don't even know that your heart is being turned. You you don't even know that your heart is being turned. Even in First Timothy 4, it talked about the, the conscience being seared. What, what, let me tell you what that means. That means that w when sin used to bother you, it used to bother you. No, it don't even bother you. Don't you don't bother you? You don't, it don't matter. It, it don't matter that they have committed adultery because they in love. They don't tear up a whole church. They don't tear up a whole marriage. But your crazy self talking about, it ain't, it's all right. There. They, they they are in love. They, you know, they love each other. This is, uh, this is, this love. People broken and wounded, uh, just left left a trail of broken and hurt people. And y'all talking about it's all right. They in love. This, it's all right. You know, adultery ain't no big thing. It ain't, it ain't that major. Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. Okay. You better think. You, you, your conscience. You used to have a conscience. It, 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 you, you, you got a check in your spirit when something right now. Your conscience has been seared. Nothing now. Sin don't even bother you. you. Just it ain't nothing. I'm telling you, we are sympathizing with sin. We sympathize with sin. We just it ain't no big deal. It ain't nothing. It's it's all right. No, no, nobody gotta live holy. Nobody gotta live righteous. Nobody, nobody gotta do it the way God says do it. You know, we can just live however we want to live we can say what we want to say we can just live a trifling life and it's no big deal it doesn't matter who it affects we can just do whatever we want to do right right as long as we just love one another well let me tell you one thing make sure you go back and listen to the dream at the beginning about bishop jakes god gave me about two months or two months or so ago y'all better think don't you abandon the faith for this world to gain access.
to the celebrities, to gain access to money, to gain access to this, to, so, so you can feel important being around this one and being around that one. You better think. Don't let your traditions nullify the gospel of Jesus Christ. Well, this is what, what, what we do. You go ahead with that foolishness. If it ain't sound doctrine, if it's not Holy Spirit inspired, you need to release it. And stick the sound doctrine like Paul told Timothy. Read exhortation and stick, and stick the sound doctrine. Stop getting caught up into all this nonsense that we see the church has gotten caught up in. Everybody want to be a wonder. The person right there in your church praying all day for you, but you will sit there and want so into them. But then TD Jakes come, you sow all your money into him. You can't even honor the person that's right there that you see every day because you're so familiar. You can't sow into them. No, because see, they don't have a big name. See, they don't have a, they don't have a big name. See, you better not abandon the faith. Y'all playing too much around with this thing here. God is not playing. God is not playing. And so you can get caught into this world, get caught into these uh, uh, pastor celebrities all you want to. But you better, you better contend with the faith and, be, and, and, and stop and, and don't abandon the faith over this nonsense they got going. They just come up with all kinds of doctrines to keep you bound. You need to do this. You need to do that. Y'all, really? Live, give yourself, Paul told Timothy, give yourself entirely to godliness. That's what you need to do. The instructions is right there. You don't have to get, you don't have to do all these rituals that they're telling you to do. I'm telling you, if y'all don't do nothing else, I want you to go read 1 Timothy and 4. Baby, it's going gonna, it's gonna to light up your life again. And that's what the Lord said to me this morning before waking up. Abandon not the faith. And this is, is, is relating to what's going on with the with Jake's when he gave me a dream, but like I said, two months or so ago. He told Timothy, preach sound doctrine, so not only will you save yourself, but you will save those that, that, that they hear you. Don't be, first of all, y'all already know that deceiving spirit like to come because it started in the beginning. And y'all just sit down having conversations with this spirit. If God said, don't eat for the tree, there is no other conversation that we need to be having. That's what he means. And for you to think that there should be a dialogue after that is ridiculous. And that's how we get deceived. Because we won't adhere, we won't adhere to don't eat at the tree. You want to just talk about it. What does the tree really mean? I mean, why can't we really eat from the tree? He's trying to help you out. You don't have to be curious about everything. Just do what he says do. And some of the stuff we won't get ourselves into. And I don't care what none of y'all say. Y'all can't fool around with too much of them celebrities in Hollywood and not get dirt. Period. You cannot fool around with sin and think you, gonna, you won't get dirt. I mean, come on, y'all. Now, don't let this thing going on with Bishop mess up with your faith. Because y'all know how I feel about that anyway. Your, your, your validations in Christ alone ain't got nothing to do with nobody else preaching. And what they doing. You work out your own soul salvation. You falling out telling me, Lord, Jesus, that's a man. He's in his flesh just like anybody else. And y'all love. And then, and then y'all want to try to defend you don't i suggest you i suggest when god gave me that dream i started praying that's exactly what i started doing i started praying for him and his family because i knew something was getting ready to go down 
pray that his heart be turned back to God. That's, the, that's your prayer. Your prayer ain't to do nothing else but to pray that he turn his heart back to God. And whatever this thing here, as, as it plays out, it won't be so severe. Are you happy because your brother going down? Man, the saints about that. The saints can do some. Y'all better think. You nobody happy because your brother and sister going down? Because that could have easily, that could most definitely be us. Pray that he turn his heart back to God. Now I want to say to y'all, don't abandon the faith. Watch who you make covenant with. All right? Watch who you're making covenant with. It's subtle. It just it just takes a minute uh compromise on one little small thing. Next thing you know, you ain't even moved by sin no more. You better be careful. And that's how let me tell y'all one thing. I know people think I'm funny acting, but I don't fool up with people who okay with sin. Y'all hear me? Mm-mm. Uh-uh, 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 uh-uh. No, I don't fool up with people who think it's okay to mistreat people. Y'all, you, you all right with that? You cool with other people mistreating people? No. Uh-uh, 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 uh-uh. I don't have, no, listen, I don't hang with people like that. People that say that they are Christians and they're okay with sin, they justify sin. Listen, even with my own tes testimony with my father, my father was a street man. Okay? My, mar my father married one of the street women. And everybody acting like, oh, you know, it's, it's okay that he was a street man. It, was, it ain't no big deal. It's all right because they're in love. Child, they're in love. That brick, that tree right there in love. Child, please. Child, that, no. My father has passed away and gone. But let me tell you one thing. He lived a horrible life. His conduct was horrible. And they was acting like it wasn't no big deal. See, I don't, no, you dangerous. When you can't call sin, sin, you dangerous. When you can't call, listen, when you, when you can't call wrong, wrong, you dangerous. And I'm the kind of people y'all want to be around. You can't come around me. You let me see you compromising right and wrong. You let me see you compromising sin and making sin okay. You can. You won't be hanging around with me. I hang around those who fear the Lord. Now y'all can just, I reverence him and I'm scared of him. How about that? Both. Because y'all think God ain't around here killing people. But okay. All right. Believe that lie. Don't. Okay. You think he's just a God. Just a love. He show his love. But God, baby, will pull you from this earth as a result of you refusing to hear him. God gave me that. God gave me that about somebody not too long ago. That he getting ready to pull them off this earth because of the way that they have treated people. So now miss me with this nonsense. That God ain't around here pulling people off this earth. Yes, he is. As a result of, consequence of. Y'all acting, you know, because they'll make you think God just one-sided. No, no, he's not. He's a loving God, and it takes him a while. And let me tell you one thing. It takes him a long time before he removes his hands off you. All this exposure right now with Jake's, uh-uh. He's been talking to Jake's. Years. Years. Ain't, we, we, we are not, uh, our father is not cruel. He's, he's been talking to Jake's for years about this, about this turning of the heart, making covenant with the world and, and, and out of worship. He been talking about it for years, trying to get him to turn his heart back. 
Ain't no just all of a sudden. No. Uh uh. We serve up. Our Father is a great God. And so I want to leave that with y'all. Because this is a serious word that I'm really not interested in people starting out in the faith and then you ended up what you preached to me that done got me saved now you 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 don't make it in i mean really come on that's not how we do this so y'all don't abandon the faith don't abandon the faith S stop making light of sin and your heart being turned away from from god subtly Stop making covenant with people that don't want to have nothing to do with your God, that don't have, that don't want to live right, that's trifling, that don't know how to treat people right, and you just making covenant with them, and they got a, they, they, they so lukewarm, you don't know whether they cold up the heart, but then you trying to embrace some soul. Yeah, you can be loving, but God said, I'm going to spew you out, because you neither hot or cold. Don't let your traditions and the things you believe in keep you away from God and from sound doctrine. I want to leave that with y'all. Y'all have a, you look, y'all have a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Love y'all. We can just do it.